In today's video, I'm going to share three of the most common mistakes that you want to avoid anytime you're wiring up an electrical outlet, but I'm also going to give you a bonus tip to make hooking one of these up so easy, you won't believe how simple it can be. The number one mistake people make when wiring up an outlet is they connect the wrong wire to the wrong terminal. Now when you look at an outlet, you might never have noticed that two of the screws on one side are silver and the other two are brass or a kind of goldish color. And this is the built-in guide in every US outlet to help you do the job correctly. You want to remember that those silver screws will always be connected to the white wire, which is also called your neutral wire. And those brass or gold screws, they're going to always be connected to the black wire, which is also called your hot. But many people wire up outlets incorrectly and the outlet still seems to work fine, but they've created a reverse polarity condition. I talk more about that in the video I've linked in the upper right hand corner, but I recommend when you're done doing any outlet wiring, that you use a plug-in tester like this. This will confirm that the polarity is correct and that your ground wire has also been connected properly. Now we should be on easy street, just strip your wire, make a hook, and then put it onto the screw in the outlet and tighten it down. Now you might think this looks great, but I've done it completely wrong and this is the second most common mistake. I've put the hook on backwards. Now it matters which direction that hook is facing because that screw tightens down screwing clockwise and you want the end of the hook to be facing to the right. And now as I tighten that screw down, it's actually going to pull the wire in a little bit tighter and that's going to give you a secure connection. If I have that hook facing to the left, as I screw it down, it's actually going to force the wire out and that can make it slip off. And unfortunately these hooks themselves are the next most common problem people make. They either strip too little wire or too much. Now that's going to cause you big problems with the hook because if you end up with too much wire, it's going to be sticking out past the outlet and this is still going to work, but it's not going to give you a proper connection and it could short out on something else. And if you strip too little wire, the problem's even worse because now some of that electrical insulation is going to end up underneath the screw. That's going to reduce your contact area and that's definitely not the kind of connection you want to make. The correct amount of insulation you want to remove is three quarters of an inch if you're going to be making a hook. Once you do that, you'll be able to form a hook that's going to fit properly. You won't have too much wire sticking out the end and you won't have too little so that you get any insulation underneath that screw. But why even bother making those hooks at all? You've got these four wires on the back of every outlet. These are typically called back wiring holes and all you need to do is strip your wire, insert the wire into those holes and now you've got an instant connection. And unfortunately this is the next most common mistake that people make. This is easy to do but it doesn't give you a good connection. The wire inside that outlet is not really connecting with enough metal for really heavy duty use. Back wiring holes have caused people a lot of problems. Electricians are almost never going to use them and this is something you definitely want to avoid. And now it's time for that bonus tip and this one is the best one of all. I'm going to show you how you can wire up an electrical outlet. You'll never have to make one of those crazy hooks and you're not going to use those back wiring holes. Almost every type of outlet you'll buy today offers a slightly upgraded version like this. Now this might look like a regular outlet, but it's got a built-in feature that you're going to absolutely love. When you flip it over, you're going to notice it doesn't have those back wiring holes, but it does have these small channels. Years ago, hospital grade outlets used to have channels like these, but those outlets could cost over $20 a piece. This is a typical outlet you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot and it costs about 50 cents more than a regular outlet. And using one of these is a dream. It starts by stripping the right amount of wire, but you don't have to worry about any measurement. Just look at the back of the outlet. This is a strip gauge. You just line up the wire and you're going to remove the right amount of insulation that matches that guide. Once you've done that, now you just loosen up the screw on the side of the outlet. And as you loosen that screw, you can see that small clamp inside the outlet opened up. Now you've just got to slide your wire right into that channel and once it's in there completely, you can go ahead and tighten that screw down. The reason this gives you such a great connection is that it doesn't rely on any type of spring. That clamp is going to hold the wire securely and it's going to give you an even better connection than if you made a hook. It's able to do that because that clamp has a small channel in the middle. That's going to give the wire even more contact area than if you had made a hook and that's going to give you a better overall connection. This is a great way to make wiring up an outlet a lot easier and reduce the amount of problems that you might have by making one of those hooks incorrectly. And did you notice the extra benefit with this design? You can put eight wires directly into those slots on the outlet. On an old style outlet, you can only connect up four wires, but people would cheat the system. They do something like this. They put four wires into the screw terminals and then jam even more wires into those back wire holes. The last wire you need to connect on any outlet is the ground screw. In the US that's always going to be indicated by a green screw and unfortunately there is a bit of bad news. They don't seem to use that clamping mechanism whenever it comes to the ground screw. That might be a code requirement, but either way you will still have to make a hook whenever you connect anything to the ground terminal. 
Electrical work isn't always for everyone, and there's always some risk of injury or even death, so you decide if it's something for you, but hopefully this video made the job a little bit easier. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to my channel with the bell on so that you'll know about all my videos as soon as they're released.